Well, hello everyone, my name is Wigo and welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be crushing Pokemon Emerald with a single Wurmple. It's been a while since I have just done a regular one Pokemon run that isn't a legendary, but I didn't want to do it with a Pokemon that it's probably possible with, so I tried Wurmple, one of the worst Pokemon in existence. I'm totally lying by the way, if we take a look at its moveset, it's so big, you can't even count how many TMs it can learn. It has access to Tackle, Poison Sting, String Shot, Tackle... And if we take a look at its stats, we can see that it's almost as good as any legendary Pokemon. 45 HP, 45 attack, but the best of all, 20 speed. Absolute insane numbers. Of course, let's just jump right into the rules. I will not be able to use any items in battle. If I can't beat a battle without items, then of course I'm going to try to do it with items. Of course, Wurmple can't learn any HM moves, so we're going to be using HM Pokemon as well. And of course, we can only use Wurmple in battle, except for double battles, then I can send out a second Pokemon, but I can't attack with it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is going to be the fight that Wurmple is going to stop at, like it's not going to be able to beat it without items. Let's try to smash 195 likes because that's Wurmple's base stat total. And with that out of the way, let's destroy Pokemon Emerald with a Wurmpy boy. We name ourselves God because we are going to be needing all the luck that we can get to beat this game. We then pick up our Wurmple and destroy the Zigzagoon, then we go to the lab to give ourselves the Wurmpy boy name, Shout out the small land with his whoopy boy run. And I also made sure that my Wurmple has the adamant nature to get the maximum amount of attack possible. We then easily destroy our rival's Torchic and my Wurmple tried to evolve, but we're going to keep him as he is because he's perfect. We immediately skip through everything and go to Roxanne's gym, but we can't even beat up the trainers in our gym. Like my Wurpee boy can't even beat up a level eight Geodude, so we're gonna have to do some grinding. Eventually at level 15, I was able to beat up all the trainers in her gym and then it was time to take on Roxanne herself. But at level 15, I wasn't even able to beat her first Pokemon Geodude. I didn't even get it past half health. So I returned at level 25, and even at level 25, I still wasn't able to get past her first Geodude, just because she can use potions, and of course, Rock Tomb and Rock Throw is going to do a lot of damage on me. Then at level 33, I was finally able to beat both of her Geodude and get to Nose Pass, so I know if I get to Nose Pass, it's probably possible to beat her. All she has to do is miss some rock tombs or go for harden and I just need to poison her with poison sting and then chip her down with tackle. And after over a hundred attempts, my wormpy boy finally overpowered Roxanne with the moves poison sting and tackle. Which means that our wormpy boy has earned ourselves our first gym badge. We then absolutely wreck the team Aqua Grunt and save Pico. As we try to leave town, we also run into May, and she has no idea what's coming to her. My Wurmpy boy absolutely wreaked havoc amongst her Lotad and Torchic without any problems. So we go to Mr. Briny's house, who brings us to Dewford Town, and we don't do the Granite Cave first, I decide to go and do Brawly. Since he's a fighting type user, his Pokemon are not very effective on my Wurmple, of course, because we're bug, and so I tackled my way through his matchup, Meditite, and Makuhira without even losing half of my health. That's the power of the perfect Wurmple. I then picked up an Everstone that's just going to give me a little bit of an advantage so I don't have to press B every single time I win a battle. We then show Steven our amazing Wurmple and he is so frightened that he actually runs off. We then go to the museum and the museum kind of reminds me of a library. And you know what's in the library? Books. So let's give a word to the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Audible. Reading books is an important thing in life. It learns you so many things. They can give you knowledge, they can make you cry, they can make you happy, but reading books is actually pretty damn time consuming. And because books are being bought less and less, we now have something called audiobooks. It's basically a book that is being read for you. So there's no need for you to read anymore. All you really have to do to get all of this knowledge or things that you're interested in is just listen to an audiobook. 
Audible has a ton of books available on their website. No matter what genre you like, they will have something for you. The reason why I use Audible is because I don't really like reading physical books. And while I'm working, I can't even read books, so Audible really helps here. I just have to press play and the entire book will be read for me. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. You can visit audible.com slash Zwigo by clicking the link in the description or you can text Zwigo to 500 500 to start your 30 day free trial. Of course, now it's time to fight our second rival battle with me. But yet again, my Wormpy boy is way too strong because I can one shot Wingle, two shot Combuskin and two shot Lombre without any problems whatsoever. But now we stumble upon another roadblock, Watson. You may think, why is Watson a roadblock? He has electric types that doesn't even wall your Wurmple. Well, it's because of one Pokemon really, and that is Magneton because of its steel type. And because of the steel typing, I can only use tackle on it and I can't poison it to get more damage off because Steel is of course immune to poison. And even a critical hit tackle doesn't do half of his health. It also doesn't help that I don't outspeed any of his Pokemon at this level, so I'm always taking chip damage from the Voltorb and from the Electric. And normally, if I level up, of course, his moves are going to do less and less damage, but the Magneton has the move Sonic Boom, which always does a set damage of 20, which is not good for Wormpole. Of course, he can also confuse me, which is going to cause me to hit myself and, of course, take even more damage. And if the Magneton gets put into red health, he's of course going to heal it up with super potions. This fight took me over 200 tries easily. Because I didn't want to grind and I felt like grinding up on Watson himself was actually the best way for me to gain EXP. So I just kept on returning and kept on returning and Watson just said, Kid, just stop, okay? This Wurmple can't beat me. That was until my Wurmple reached level 50. And then... Then I was about to whoop his ass. Because we now one-shot his Voltorb and Electric, this means that we don't take any chip damage from them, which is amazing. Magneton is now a four-shot with Tackle. And even though I got stuck in Paralysis a couple of times, I still pushed through and the Magneton was finally down, which means that we can move on to his final Pokemon, Manectric. And he takes three Tackles to go down, and just like that, we have received our third Chim Batch. This means that we have to go up to Mount Chimney and of course fight Maxi. And Maxi's Pokemon is a Mightyena, Camerupt and Zubat. But the only real problem here is Camerupt. I only got smacked about four to five times by this thing because the AI is very dumb and he decides to use Magnitude which is not very effective against me. Instead of Ember and the other two Pokemon, Mightyena and Zubat, were tackled easily as well. So after we destroy Maxi, we of course have to go to Flannery, the fire type gym leader. And you may think that Flannery was actually harder than Watson. Well, you're totally wrong, actually. Yes, the Torkoal would one-shot me at the current level that I'm at right now, but the AI once again was very, very stupid, because she has, of course, a Numel, Camerupt, Slugma, which are all pretty easy to take down, because they can't really damage me too much, and then once I get to the Torkoal, she obviously has to go for Overheat, but she doesn't go for it like 80% of the time. She actually uses Body Slam more, which is good for me because then I can get in a lot more hits. And because the Torkoal is very bulky, this also means that I have to get in a lot of tackles before it actually goes down. But of course, I also have to poison the Torkoal to get off chip damage, and then I just keep on tackling while she uses body slams until my Wurmple comes out on top, and I win my fourth gym badge. Of course, now we go to the fifth gym leader, our dad, who is of course going to get destroyed by my Wurmple. Psych, we're actually going to get destroyed by his slanking. My Wurmple's tackles really don't do enough damage on it, and sometimes his Sly Noon could overpower me as well. But eventually, I found some kind of strategy to take him down. I know with Wurmple, there isn't much strategy to go on, but if I'm at a certain amount of health, his slacking will actually always go for counter. So all I have to do is, when it's his turn to attack, just go for String Shot. Then he loafs around, I can hit him with a tackle, 
He then goes for a counter again, string shot again, which means that my Wurmple is actually not going to get hit. With these big brain plays, we easily defeated our dad after only about 25 attempts. If you want to see more big brain plays, you definitely will want to follow me on Twitch because next week we're going to be streaming a Radical Red Hardcore Nuzlocke. Don't miss it. We then fast forward a bit all the way to Fortress CD where we have to fight Mei again. But her team really wasn't too much of a hassle, I was able to two-shot all of her Pokemon with Wormpy Boy. And then we of course move on to the next gym which is Winona with flying type Pokemon, another type that Wurmple is weak to. So that really isn't too great for us, but there are only two Pokemon that really give Wurmple trouble here. One of them is of course Altaria with Dragon Dance Aerial Ace, but the second one is actually Skarmory. And the only real reason why is because she resists my tackles and I basically do no damage to Skarmory. At least not at the level that we're at now, so 65 is just a bit too low in order for me to win because I would have to get basically a crit every single turn. There is also no way that her Pokemon are going to miss a move because of course Aerial Ace is a move that never misses. And again, there is no real strategy here, so the only thing I can do is grind up to level 75. At level 75, I could two-shot the first three team members, but of course Altaria and Skarmory will take more tackles to go down. At this level, I was able to beat Skarmory because we got a critical hit with tackle at the right moment. And then we only had to take down Altaria, which took me a lot of tackles because she still had two hyper potions, and I was only left with a few HP before we gained our sixth gym badge. We then go to Lilico City, but of course we get stopped by Mei again. Even though her Lombre evolved into Ludicolo and she added a Tropius to the team, this still was a two-shot sweep with every single move. Mei really didn't give us any trouble in any fight. So we skip all of the Mount Pyre stuff and head straight to the Volcano to take on Maxi. He only has three Pokemon, which are Crobat, Maidiena, and Camera, but his first Pokemon, Maidiena, does have the ability Intimidate, which is not good for our Wurmple. But I got very lucky because the Maiena used Swagger, which gave me a plus two attack boost. Minus the Intimidate, that does mean that we're only at plus one. But this was just enough to scrape by with only seven HP remaining because his Crobat actually was able to do some decent damage on Wurmple. After Groudon shoots off in a space, we clear out the Team Aqua Hideout without any problems, didn't even come close to losing anywhere. And we make our way to Moss Deep CD to fight our 7th gym leaders, Tate and Liza. And this is a double battle, so I of course have to go in my second Pokemon as an HM Pokemon. He goes down and then it's 2 against 1 for my Wurmple, which is just really not good. The Claydol actually goes for Earthquake a majority of the time, so I can keep that thing alive while I focus on the left Pokemon, because Earthquake is not very effective on Wurmple and Claydol is not a physical attacker. But the Zatu can do some very decent damage with Psychic, and at this level I wasn't even able to beat one of their Pokemon. So I came back at level 90. And then at level 90 I was able to beat the Zatu, but then the Soul Rock would come out, set up a sunny day, and do an absolute buttload of damage with Flamethrower. And of course both of my moves are not very effective, and even if I get two crits, that's not enough to take down Soul Rock. So I decided to grind up my Wurmple to level 100. And this time I was still not able to beat the Soul Rock. I tried this battle over a thousand times easily and I just wasn't able to beat the Soul Rock. And after the Soul Rock they still have a Lunatone. So I'm pretty sure that this battle is not possible to win with Wurmple without using items. I think even if you get a critical hit on every single tackle you go for, it's still not going to be possible. Of course, I might be wrong, there might be a very, very slight chance that Whirlpool can win this, but I'm not going to do this battle any more than I have already, because this basically drove me insane. So, can you beat Pokemon Emerald with a Wurmple without using any items? No, but that doesn't mean that the run ends here. We're just going to keep going, even if we have to use items in battle, our Wurmple is going to become champion. Of course, all of the next fights I'll be doing, I'm going to try to do them without items first, and then, if they're not possible without items, we're going to do them with items. For this battle, I knew that I wasn't going to need any X items. 
So what I did was I just tackled the Zatu, then tackled the Soul Rock, then tackled the Clay Doll, and tackled the Lunatone until I got my 7th Gym Badge, and in between I of course used my Hyper Potions to heal up if needed. After this, it's my double battle with Steven, and of course I can't make him not use any Pokemon, so this one was actually very easy. I sweep through Maxi and Tabitha without having to use any items, so I tackled all of their Pokemon into oblivion. We then do some diving and make our way to the seafloor cavern to take on Archie before he summons Kyogre. Archie basically has the same team as Maxi, but of course his Camerupt is switched out for Sharpedo. But to be honest with you, his team is not even hard to take down. I just tackled my way through my Diena, tackled my way through Crobat, and then his Sharpedo used the Swagger on me, so I had plus one in attack because of the Intimidate of my Diena, and then I tackled him as well. With that, the world is just about to end, but guess who is going to save the day? Wurmple. He actually is able to calm down Groudon and Kyogre with only 1% of his power. Which means that we finally move on to the last gym leader, Juan. And even though we couldn't beat the 7 gym leader without items, we can actually beat Juan without ever using an item. Which is very surprising. Rumpel 1-shot Love Disc, 2-shot Wish Cash. Also, two tackles for Celio and Crawdont, and finally it was Kingdra who took a lot more tackles because of Hyper Potions, but eventually my Wurmple was even able to beat the Seahorse of Death. And so with our 8th Gym Badge, this means that we can move on to the Victory Road and beat up Wally as well. Wally's Altaria and Delcati go down no problem, then an old nemesis Magneton comes out, but even he goes down to only 3 tackles. And Roselia and Gardevoir are no problems at all whatsoever. This means that it's time for the Elite Four. Starting off with Sydney. But before we do that, I go ahead and stock up on X items and full restores and all that because I know that Wurmple isn't going to be able to beat the Elite Four without items. But Sydney would actually be possible if not for his first Pokemon, my Iena, because the Intimidate is basically the downfall of my Wurmple. If we don't have our normal attacking stat, there is no way we beat him. His second Pokemon, Absol, can easily set up with a Sword Stance and one-shot me with a Rock Slide or an Aerial Ace. This happened way too many times, but eventually I was able to kill Absol, but then I got stuck on his Pokemon, Cacturn or Shiftry. And after attempting this fight about 300 times without items, I was like, okay, no way this is possible, so we're just going to go with items. So after drugging up my worm pole with a bunch of X attacks, X defense and full restores, I was eventually able to one shot all of his Pokemon with tackles and poison stings. Then it was time for the second Elite Four member, Phoebe. And the only move I can use on Phoebe is poison sting because tackle is of course not going to hit ghost types. Well, it doesn't really help that ghosts resist poison because that means that my poison sting is literally doing no damage. I could not even beat her first Pokemon, Dusclops, and it has the ability pressure, so it drains my poison sting PP by a lot. So I knew that this was definitely not possible, so I immediately just set up some X attacks, drugged up my Wurmple and some X defense as well, and then I proceeded to wreak havoc with my tiny little Wurmple. You guys thought I was gonna say something else, huh? Anyway, after destroying Phoebe with my drugged up poison stinging Wurmple, it was time for Glacia. And I'm just gonna be straight out here, I was only able to beat one of her Pokemon and her second Pokemon Glalie walled me already because I just wasn't able to do enough damage with my tackles. And it did way too much damage with Ice Beam, so I once again managed to drug up my Wurmple to the max and then proceeded to take down her entire team with tackles, of course, combined with full restores once I would go down into red health. Even her thick wall rain fell to my Wurmple. Of course, after beating Glacia, it's time for Drake, and if Glacia isn't possible, then Drake is definitely not going to be possible with Pokemon like Flygon, and Celamance and Altaria, which can easily two-shot me. So you guessed it, my Wurmple had to take some more Vitamin X. Then my Wurmple was able to defeat the Shellgon, defeat the Flygon, the Altaria, the Celamance, and the Kingdra without 
too many problems of course once again some full restores had to be used as well so now it's of course time to move on to champion wallace the worst champion in existence hashtag bring back steven so let's jump right into it the first pokemon waylord yeah that's basically it that's the only pokemon that I'm going to see without using items. I cannot defeat this Waylord even if I get a crit on every single turn. Wurmple is just too weak to take on such a thick whale without using vitamin X. And so of course, after giving my Wurmple his daily vitamins, he was able to sweep the Waylord with only a single tackle because of the double edge recoil damage he took already. We then proceed to one shot the Tentacruel and take a Hydro Pump like a champ. Lodicolo came out, so I had to use a full restore, then kill it with a single critical hit tackle. Wish Cash was a one shot. On Gyarados, I got another one shot with a critical hit, then my Lodi came out, so I used another full restore. And one more tackle won me the battle, which means that our Wurmple has become champion of the Hoenn region. But it doesn't end here. This would not be an Emerald video if we didn't take on the real champion Steven Stone. So yeah, I already knew that this battle wasn't going to be possible without items because I probably couldn't even do half of his Skarmory's health. So I became ready to soup up my Wurmple and just give it a bunch of X attacks and X defense and full restores. I probably used over 50 full restores in this battle alone. That's how insanely hard Steven would be. But one thing I found out is that I can't just use tackle on every single one of his Pokemon because then I will run out of PP. So every single Pokemon that was able to get hit by Poison Sting, I had to kill that with Poison Sting. For this battle, I also used a Dire Hit to increase my critical hit chance to ensure that my Wurmple doesn't run out of tackles. So after souping up my Wurmple, I was able to defeat the Skarmory with a bunch of full restores and 8 tackles. The second Pokemon was Claydol and I got lucky with a poison on the first Poison Sting and then two more Poison Stings and the Claydol is down already. Next up is Cradley and Cradley went down after four Poison Stings after he used a full restore and because I got some critical hit luck and a poison again. Then Armaldo came out and he went down with 6 poison stings, of course after using another full restore and poisoning him once again. Then the last two Pokemon are Agron and Metagross. Next up is Agron, and Agron actually took 18 tackles before it went down because of its typing steel and rock so it resists me 4 times. So you can guess how many full restores my Wurmple had to use before I was actually able to beat it. Now the last Pokemon is Metagross and he went down to 5 tackles but he got a couple of critical hits with Psychic which of course caused me to use a bunch more full restores. And with that, we have finally defeated Steven, which means that my Wurmple's journey in the Hoenn region has been completed. So technically, you could probably get up to the Elite 4 with a Wurmple without items if Tate and Liza wasn't a double battle. But my Wurmple has done very well. I would have probably expected that he got walled by Wynona's Altaria or something, but he managed to pull through and even reach Tate and Liza. If you got any more Pokemon that you want me to do or just any kind of challenge, leave it down in the comments below as always. I also want to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. And as always, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters. If you want to support me yourself, you can click the link in the description. The help is really appreciated. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.